What's up guys, Coconut here with Utopia Games. Today I'm bringing you a deck tech, uh, actually it's a bunch of deck tech. My all time favorite deck in the entire world, um, Forever Alone Lucario. Uh, I did want to point out today, just to show you really quick. Uh, today I hit a hundred games played with this version on stream tonight. Um, which totals out to 232 games played total with a version of this deck. Um, I had version 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. Now I'm on this version. Uh, so 232 games played totaled with all those versions. Um, so I'm not going to say this very often, but I think this is probably one of the most optimal builds I've ever seen or played. Um, and I have played multiple other versions of this. Uh, I've watched videos, I've read articles, um, forums, I've, people have told me what to play in person, uh, what they would change. And I've tried it all. Like, because this is my favorite deck, I've definitely taken into consideration a lot of these um, comments and a lot of the different decks I've seen just to see and try some of their stuff. Um, and I happen to think that this is probably one of the better versions out there, um, mostly just because I've played it so much and every time a card just doesn't feel good or good enough, I will take it out and try something new. And every time a new set has come out, I've tried some of the newer cards in it um, just to see how they play. Uh, for example, I just tried Tapu Lele um, today, actually, and it just was not good. It filled out my bench. I wasn't doing the damage I wanted to do, and I never had enough energy to spare to put on the Tapu Lele so that it could start attacking. Um, so, I mean, I have tried a lot of the newer cards. Um, Shaman's definitely not good in this deck. I thought they would be 100% bad. Don't ever play that in this deck ever, um, especially with Forever Alone Lucario. He just doesn't want it out there. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and jump on into this deck. I'll explain all the cards. There are a lot of reasons I'm playing some of these cards. Um, I'll try to go in depth on them as much as I can and why I chose them. Um, but yeah, 10 Pokemon so far. You, I'm playing two of the Talon Flames. He's obviously in here for the same reason he's in any other deck. You want to start out with him. You want the one energy on him. Do 40 damage. It kind of softens up their main, which is pretty cool. Um, but it lets you search for two cards. I usually get about two to three searches off with this, um, and then that gets you about six cards. And those six cards are almost enough to, you don't play them all, you usually just kind of holding on to them. That's enough to get you your main Lucario ready to go, a bench Lucario fully powered to go, and then you're just kind of just in that waiting game where when they knock them out, you can retreat them however you want to do it. Um, I generally try to let them knock them out so it won't go on the bench, and there will be less guys on the bench. Uh, but occasionally, you know, he survives. They're just starting out slow, whatever. Um, he's not bad to have late game, too. It lets you get the other guys, or your two cards later, too. But two of these guys, you'd be surprised how often you start with him. I start with him, I'd probably say about 80 to 90% of the games I play, I start with that Talon Flame. Um, there are only six basic Pokemon, so it's a pretty good chance of hitting him. <clears throat> I play four of the Ryolus. Uh, obviously, you need four of the basic. This is the 70 hit point version. There is a 60 hit point version. I don't think that 10 hit points has ever really mattered enough that if you didn't own this um, and you, you just don't need to trade for it, don't worry about it. The 60 hit point version will be perfectly fine. Both of their attacks are no good. You're never going to use either of the attacks. Um, I just happen to own this one and that 10 hit points just in case. You never know. And then obviously on to the main reason we play this deck is Lucario. He is a stage 1 with 110 hit points, so he is weak, um, very frail. You'll probably lose two or three of these guys before the game's over, which is fine. Like I said, this is a mid to late game deck, um, so you don't want to worry too much about it when you do lose them. I love this picture. I feel like, I know that for a while I thought he was thinking about the Alakazam, um, but I noticed that this is probably just like a, some sort of TV screen. But the picture looks super cool. I love the way it looks. He's just kind of like, I feel like he's just all by himself thinking about how he's going to get revenge on this Alakazam who like murdered his family or something. I don't know. Super cool picture though. Um, stage 1, 110 hit points. Uh, his first attack, vacuum wave, does 50. It doesn't matter uh, what their weakness or resistance is. You don't use this attack very often. You, or at least I hope you're not. That probably means you're in a bad position. Um, but one energy 50, not terrible, not good either way. Try not to use that if you don't have to. Um, fight alone though, this is the main reason we're playing it. Uh, for one steel, one colorless, you're doing 30 plus. 
if you have fewer Pokemon in play than your opponent, this attack does 60 more damage for each Pokemon you have fewer in play. So, for example, you have a Lucario out, and you have Lucario on your bench, and they have a full 5 on their bench. That's a 4 Pokemon difference. You're going to be doing an extra 240 damage plus the initial 30. So 270 damage. So that means if you have no bench Pokemon and they have a full bench of 5, this guy's doing 330 damage for 2 energy. And that's it's just crazy that you can do that. Uh, more often than not, though, you are only at a 3 Pokemon difference. I've noticed that just happens to be the number that pops up the most when I attack with this. Um, that's still 210 damage uh, at a 3 Pokemon difference. So in this new format with GXs, Stage 1 GXs, most of them are 210 or lower. Knocks those guys out in one hit. Uh, this knocks out most EXs with Fighting Fury Belts in one hit. It's just such a good attack to be able to just one-shot things right away. Um, like I said, it is a mid to late game deck. So when they have knocked out your Talonflame or they knocked out one or two Lucarios, he just comes out and just starts you know, getting you that prize trade back, uh, you know, they're like, oh, cool, I've drawn three, you just knock out two guys and you're back in the game, um, but the best guy ever, uh, my buddy Matt one time called this the forever alone Lucario, because of the attack fight alone, um, and so ever since then, it's basically just been the forever alone Lucario to me, so if you ever watch my stream, or you, or you just see me in person, like, that's what I call this deck, forever alone Lucario, it's great, it's stuck with me forever, um, so those are your 10 Pokemon. Like I said, I've tried the Shamans, I've tried Tapu Lele, I've tried Octillaries. None of them seem to work. They just fill up your bench. You don't do as much damage. It's just not a good thing to put those in here. Um, which is cool because then it keeps it at a budget. So you don't have to worry about spending a ton of money on those Pokemon. Um, but yeah, those are the 10. On to the trainers. We're playing 40 trainers, which is quite a bit. Um, but they're all really good. They just happen to be a lot. Uh... We are playing three Captivating po Pogapuffs. Um, it doesn't hit as often the first turn. Oh, cool, let me hit the Shaman and the Hoopas and stuff. I have done that occasionally, and it is neat to be able to do that. But it's more in there for the like mid-late game. When they finally realize what's going on and they're holding all their Pokemon, um, you just play that, you can look at their hand, and then you put their two or three guys that they're holding onto their bench. So now your Lucario is back to doing more damage. Uh, occasionally I will use it first turn just to see what their hand is. Um, and sometimes you do hit the Shaman and the Hoopa. So if you do draw it open again, go ahead and play it. It's not going to hurt. You might end up doing some pretty cool plays off of it. Uh, but yeah, three of those. Level Ball, there's two. Um, it only hits the Ryolu, which I've had people tell me to take it out, and I took it out. But a lot of the times, you just want to get that basic without having to discard cards to the Ultra Ball. Um, so I, I kept it at 2, and 2 seems to be a pretty good number um, for the most part. Uh, I wouldn't go up or down on that. <clears throat> uh, Max Elixirs, um, I do play 3. Oddly enough, when it first came out, for whatever reason, I got so excited. I read it, and I just didn't read it properly. Uh, I played it, saw Steel Energy, and it didn't get put on my Lucario, and I had to reread the card. And that's when I realized that it only hit the bench Pokemon Basics. Um, so I ended up keeping it in because I just forgot to take it out. I hit play on the next game and I played around at that time. Uh, I'd have a Lucario active and I'd have the Ryulu on the bench. I would max Elixir into one energy. You hit them a lot in this deck. So I put the one energy on him and then I'd attach the energy for the turn, uh, evolve into Lucario. And now all of a sudden you have two Lucarios ready to go. So when the main one gets knocked out and you bring out the, the secondary guy, um, it's just a seamless transition into those guys. Like, just like, oh, cool, one got knocked out. This next one's ready to go. Let me play Ryolu, drop another Max Elixir on it. And it gets you that two or three times that when they get knocked out that you don't have to worry. Your next one's already ready to go and powered up, and you're just knocking guys out all day. Um, so three Max Elixirs in this deck. You definitely have to play around them, though, um, and not just evolve your Lucario immediately. Uh, so, yeah, three of those. Super Rod, um, only one. Uh, I played two for a while, but it just you just don't need them as often. Um, sometimes you have the Ryulus or the Lucarios in your prizes. Uh, so when one gets knocked out, you just super rot them back in so that when you search for them, that there's at least one back in there. Um, not often I use it to get an energy or need the energy back in the deck, but um, you know you can grab those two if you need to. Uh, four Trainer's Mails. It lets you dig down to those Pokepops in late game. It lets you dig down to Max Elixirs if you need them. Um, even the level ball, I guess, if you need that too. Uh, but yeah, four of those. 
Um, a pretty standard card. A lot of people know why they're indexed and how to play it. Uh, three Ultra Balls. I had four. I had two. Three seemed to be the magic number. Um, you don't use them as often as you'd think in this deck. You generally have drawn all your Lucarios or your Town Flame has pulled them out for you. Um, or you Wally them. Uh, so you, you don't use it as often as you'd think. But when you do need it, it is in there. And you, you just have to keep them just in case. Um, four versus Seekers, you want your Lysanders back, usually a lot more often than not with these. Um, <clears throat> after you poke a Puffed onto their bench and you Lysander their Shaman or their guy that they just can't retreat ever, um, it's just worked so well so many times. Uh, but yeah, four versus Seekers, they are pretty cheap right now too, so technically making this a, an extremely good budget deck. Um, the two Reverse Valleys are probably the only thing in the deck that are very interchangeable, and I've tried a million different stadiums. Um... There aren't really any stadiums now except for maybe the new one where your steel guys have no weakness. But he's getting knocked out in one turn, so that kind of still doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, these two stadiums are probably the only thing that you could switch in out to whatever your play style or preference is. I kind of just have them in there to get rid of their stadiums. Um, I've had people parallel city themselves uh, when I had no stadiums in the deck, so that just kind of ruined this. Um, so I put them in there just to kind of get rid of those things or get rid of something that might be helping them a lot. Uh, but that 10 damage that, that it's preventing just doesn't do anything. Your guy gets knocked out so quick that 10 extra, or the 10, yeah, the 10 less damage they're doing doesn't stop you from getting knocked out. Two Lysanders, this thing is super key with the Poke Puffs. Um, sometimes you do need to stall out one or two turns uh, to get that extra fighting energy on the Forever Lonely Cario. Um, and I've even had people retreat out of their active to try to power it up, um, or they're just you know, throw a guy out on their active to sacrifice. You last hander up the one dude they're powering up, and when you do 330, it doesn't matter. It just knocks it out. Great card. Two of them. You want to draw them. <clears throat> um, three ends in this deck. A lot of people still only play two. I still always play three. It doesn't matter what deck I'm playing. I'll always play three. But in this particular deck, it helps a lot. You mulligan a ton with only six basic Pokemon, um, especially if one of them, like, happened to have got... I guess the prizes really doesn't matter. But, yeah, I mean, with only six basic, they draw four or five extra cards off you sometimes um and if you're going first that end dropping them back down to six is very nice um and because it is a mid to late game deck you do lose a couple lucarios or even the talent flame early on so you can end them back down to like four cards um <clears throat> after because you probably haven't drawn a prize yet um they've drawn two or three so you can end and that hurts them a ton um and it never really hurts you in this deck until like last like turn or two when you're about to win anyways um, four Professors, just a standard card in every deck, and it's great in this deck. It's great in every deck, so four of them. Um, Skyla times three is one of the cards that people just get confused about a lot. But after you play it, you realize that she's actually pretty key to this deck, too. Um, three lets you draw her often enough that you can use her, but not often, like too often, that you're just going to have, you know, two or three of them sitting in your hand. Um, so three of them are key, and she pulls out a ton of things. Um, late game, they're holding their Pokemon. You can Skylar the Pokepuff out. Uh, you dropped a Ryolu, and you don't have that Max Elixir, but you have an Energy and a Lucario in your hand. Skylar for that Max Elixir. Take that chance, hit it on him. Drop the other Energy, evolve into Lucario. Like, she just pulls out all the cards you need um, whenever you need them. <clears throat> so... Don't be afraid to use her instead of a Professor for the turn or an N or a Lysander or whatever. Get what you need with her. She is super good in this deck. Um, two Wallies. I use him a lot more than I thought to. Um, I only had one for a while. But there are a lot of plays where you just kind of <clears throat> end up, you know, just Ryolu energy or two. You didn't draw your Lucario's for a reason. They're prized. Um, you know, whatever the case may be, you could just Wally right away. Uh, I've even first turned Energy Ryolu. One of the best things with him too is if you don't start your Talon Flame, you have the Ryolu out. You go Energy, go. They do some stuff. They don't knock him out. You're like, all right, cool. My turn, Energy Wally. You have your Lucario. You're powered up, ready to go. Turn two. Sweet. And now you're attacking for a decent amount of damage. Um, so times two in there. You just happen to start with it. Cool. If you don't, later on you can just use it to pull him out. Um, one of the other reasons I'm not playing four Ultra Balls is because of the Wally. So. Uh, two of them I thought that was good enough, and they just happen to work uh, whenever I draw them. It's not usually a bad thing. 
four of the Bursting Balloons. Bursting Balloon is a great card in this deck. They will not attack your little frail Lucario because you did just did you know 150 damage to them. And if they attack you, their guy gets knocked out. You're going to draw your prize or two, and they're only going to get one prize. So that Bursting Balloon has stalled a ton. Um, the Skyla lets you get it when you need it to, which is always nice. But yeah, uh, Bursting Balloon times four. It just stalls a ton. Great card. And technically, putting the Bursting Balloon on them when they attack it, um, is, it's almost like having that extra Pokemon difference too because um, it is putting 60 damage on them so super cool super good stall card just play it when you need it um, sometimes I'll just play them when I draw them it's like cool play it good to go whatever uh, 10 energy the 10 energy lets you hit max elixir a lot um, even though the Lucario only requires two energy you need to draw energy you start out town flame you need that one energy to get going um, I played with 8 for a while, I thought 8 was a pretty good number, and I just wouldn't draw them ever. Uh, and you just kind of sit there like, okay, cool, well now I can't even attack with the main reason I'm trying to attack. Um, but 10 seemed to be the key number for energies, it was just odd that I added the extra 2. Uh, mostly just because they were league promos and I happened to have them. Um, so yeah, I threw the 2 in there, 10 energy, ended up being perfect number for this deck, and I've kept it at 10 ever since. Um, but yeah, so this is the deck. Uh, like I said, 232 games played. Um, favoritist deck in the entire planet. He just looks super cool. The attack's great. Um, and you can call it Forever Loan, and that's hilarious too. But uh, yeah, favorite deck. Man, just play this deck. You're going to love it. Um, it's not going to win your regionals, and it's not going to win a Worlds. But when you pull it out at your locals, especially if they don't realize what's going on right away, um, they go first, you have your talent flame out, you know, whatever, and they're just playing all their cool stuff, Lele's and Shaman's and, you know, whatever the heck they're playing. And then all of a sudden you're like Ryolu, Energy, Wally, you know, Lucario, and you just come swinging out it for like 200, 300 damage. It's pretty funny to see the look on people's faces. Um, and I've built this deck in real life too a couple of times and have let people borrow it. And every time I do, they've always had a ton of fun with it. And I, I've had a couple of our customers um who used it for multiple weeks in a row just to play it because they're just having fun with it um but yeah like i said it is my favorite deck i think this is probably one of the more optimal builds um but if i ever change anything i'll probably make another video for it and then you know who knows even by then it might be at three or four hundred games played um but yeah all-time favorite deck uh and there it is and i get a lot of people on stream always asking to see what the deck list is so here it is feel free to copy it up and uh you know, just play it and have a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, please. Let me know uh, if you played it and what you thought of the deck. Um, and especially let me know if you play it in real life. Just tell me if you had fun with it or not. I would love to hear from that um, experience. But yeah, super budget deck. Um, easy to build, fun to play. Uh, feel free to copy it and have a lot of fun. Other than that, this is Coconut signing out. I will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.